Oba Iwari the second is about now to address a world press conference on the controversy surrounding the return of certain artifacts and uh, let's take you live. Again, you're watching live visuals from the Palace of the Oba of Benin by Iwari the Second, Omo Noba Nedo Ukwakpolopolo. And uh, this, I must say, is unusual, Ekene, okay. for the revered Oba uh, to be addressing uh, a world conference such as this. It's not something we see. Uh, all the time is truly historic. The last time we saw Obwa Iwari II uh, come to public glare, he was intervening in the political crisis in Edo State ahead of the last elections between uh, once upon a time godfather uh, comrade Adam Soshomale and once upon a time godson and incumbent governor Godwin Obaseki. And, and then did he do a public address? Because I was going to say this seems a bit out of the ordinary to mm -hmm. have a public address a public press conference. And it, well, at that time, he, he had a closed door session with them and, of course, addressed them before the, 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 the press. Uh, to be honest, uh, belittling them, uh, you know, <laughs> spoke to them in a way, addressing them to say, you know, you get are, your act together. Get your act together. You're from the same political party at that time before the defection of uh, Governor, Governor Basaki to the PDP. Well, I mean, you would say that this particular situation warrants this. Um, judging from the comments we got from the press, uh, the I think he's the secretary, the chief secretary, who was with uh, Christian Ogodo at the time. It would seem that he's coming to lay the gauntlet down. Mm. We're hoping he will be open to some kind of negotiation. But he's basically saying, this is my property. It belongs to me. It's not open to any debate. That would seem to be the, the angle they're pushing. Indeed, well, maybe the word's not belittling, but scolding them okay. at that time he was. Reprimanding. Uh, reprimanding <laughs> them. Uh, the... the Artifacts that are meant to be returned, uh, history to that as well, it was stolen by the British uh, people during that invasion. And of course, uh, some people will say indeed massacre because Benin Kingdom was burnt. Uh, it's a very interesting story behind it. Uh, apparently, they were there to see the then king, the then Oba, uh, Oba of Amare, mm. uh, not by say, and uh, he couldn't see the British entourage. And of course, they took offense to that. Some history books will say they took offense to that. Uh, that entourage was never seen again. And of course, uh, the, the British did not take that likely. And of course, that invasion happened. The rest, they say, is history. Uh, but there's also history between these two men uh, that are involved in this Squabble. brewing controversy, uh, should we say. They are both great, great grandchildren of one time best friends. Yes, their oh. great, great grandfathers oh. were best friends. Oh, wow. So this would be interesting to see if they will somehow come together once again and build. Because what, what is intriguing about this particular case is that they both seem to want the same thing, which mm -hmm. is to preserve these artifacts now that it's been accepted that they will be returned. Um, preserve them in the best way for the posterity of Edo State. Uh, and for Nigeria, really, we must say, because this is something that um, we look forward to seeing more of this. Maybe this will be the first of many. Um, so we hope this can be resolved amicably. Um, I think the Oba has a strong case, just to throw my own opinion in there. Um, but perhaps what he's looking for is that acknowledgement and then collaboration can go beyond that. Uh, not to preempt uh, the Abba, but we've heard, you know, the undercurrent of what is likely to be the issue here is custody of this returned looted at artifact. Mm. Who It's also about accountability, yes. some would tell you, because museums are complex organizations to run, like mm -hmm. I keep saying. Uh, they are maintained on behalf of public trust, yes. reliant on funding and support to thrive. Uh, but we know that the museums we have in Nigeria at the moment, uh, you know, they just, they lack accountability. Yes. So Internal enough. structures do not exist. And of course, financial mismanagement and ethical breaches. So both 
parties perhaps do have strong arguments. Yes. Uh, some would say the Oba, who is the custodian of tradition and culture, should have custody. After all, they were taken from the from palace. Yeah. But on the other hand, the controversy is that the governor, uh, Godwin Obasaki, has allegedly uh, floated a, a, a private trust to handle this artifact. Mm. And what would that do? That will simply that simply means he, the property, which is the museum or the artifacts in this in this case, will be vested in persons known as uh, trustees for okay. the benefit of the public, generation okay. unborn. Okay. And of course, there will be better funding. But then the I artifacts you, are better kept. Yes, but I heard you then, you know, mulling over the possibility that you could have a joint trust, private and public. Um, whether the Oba would then be given the custody of these artifacts, which is his anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but allow for uh, Godwin uh, Baseki to then assist him in terms of um, looking after these artifacts under a trust. So I, I imagine this can have a very good resolution and can set a precedent going forward. It just depends on how it's handled. Indeed, and there are many examples of you know private trusts handling museums across the world, in the United States, in the in in, in the United Kingdom. Uh, some will even say even here in Nigeria, the Mason Center. Uh, um, um, terraculture, beg your pardon, you know, and even the Muson Center, and mm -hmm. that's why you have a different organization owning different holes. So how does this work? As a, there's a, a board of trustees uh, who, of course, ensure that the finances put into that trust is used for the purpose it is set for. Okay. In this instance, so to there ensure will be accountability. there should be accountability, and that's why that's the essence of it. How do you ensure that everyone? is on board. Mm. That is why the governor, should he go ahead with this alleged private trust, must ensure that the interest mm. of the royal family, That's of course, is put into, into account. account. Yeah. And, and that means that the royal family has to be given, uh, you know, has to be brought on board when mm. it comes to that private uh, private trust. Yes. So it, it, some would say it's a win-win for everyone. Yes. It just has to be that meeting ground, yes, that certainly. middle point. Yes. Uh, but let's, let, let's wait and see to hear what the Oba has to say. I think that we can now go live to the palace. at the uh, audience hall, the Palace of His Royal Majesty, the Opera of Benin, Okwa Bolokbolo, Oba Eware II, where uh, the chiefs, traditional rulers, Enogies, are members of the royal family uh, from over 10 generations have been paying homage to His Royal Majesty, the Oberu Benin. Uh, these are some of the courtesies uh, to His Royal Majesty, the Oberu Benin.
Okay, we're about to take the Edo National Anthem, uh, where everybody is expected to rise. you've just uh, heard, or the Benin Anthem, which of course has uh, some praises, eulogization of His Royal Majesty as well. the Ober of Benin is going to address the chief's traditional rulers, royal family members, the Enigays, in a Do language over the issue of the repatriation of Benin artifacts that were plundered during the invasion of Benin Kingdom in 1897. Well, His Royal Majesty the Ober of Benin is opening his speech with some prayers to God and our ancestors, and he welcomes everybody for honoring the invitation. But 
talk by and his real majesty again uh, like the statesman that he is is has greeted
We're watching live visuals from Benin City, the Edosid capital, Obaiwari II, addressing his kinsmen in his language there. 
uh, there are reports of brewing controversies over uh, the returned, to be returned, looted artifacts from the kingdom. Uh, reports suggest that the uh, monarch would prefer the artifacts to return to where they were stolen, his palace. Yes. At that time, it was his great great grandfather ruling Benin, Benin Kingdom. Yes, and his uh, argument would be that the uh, artifacts belonged to his great grandfather, and so if something is stolen, then it should be returned. As his secretary stated emphatically, it should come back to the original owner. Um, we would love to hear his final statement on the matter and, and maybe look forward to hearing if he's open to some kind of collaboration as regards his custody. Uh, well, his, the custody would be his, but as regards the uh, care of the artifacts and how the artifacts are to be maintained and looked after and in what building. So these are maybe issues that will unfold in the days to come, but perhaps based on what he says here, we'll know um, how likely such a collaboration will be going forward. Mm. Although the Oba is uh, speaking to his kinsmen in his uh, language at the moment, he's promised to address the press and of course the world uh, in English when he's about done with his kinsmen. One takeaway from this, Adiswa, is that at least the, the world and Nigerians will remember again how valuable art and artifacts are to us. And uh, perhaps we can go back to the origins of these artifacts and begin to reevaluate you know, our own estimation of uh, artifacts to begin with, because some have said that the neglect of some of our museums to date perhaps seem to speak to our lack of appreciation of the things that others seem to value more than ourselves such that they have held on to it for so long. But perhaps this debate that's going on will remind us once again that artifacts have an intrinsic value as regards our identity, as regards our past history. So perhaps those conversations will be reawakened again. Okay, let's go back to listening on the procedures and the conversation that's been had by the Oba. Okay, so as we uh, continue to listen to Oba Iwari's uh, comments regarding uh, the situation and hopefully get his own perspective uh, on things and wait for the translation on his statements. Um, we look forward to seeing uh, an amicable resolution to this matter, um, Ed Adesua. Did the Oba there speaking Benin language to his kinsmen, uh, updating them on his views on what seems to be a controversial uh, subject at the moment, the custody of returned uh, looted at artifact to Benin. Uh, you know, Ekene, you were talking about how priceless artifacts are and how they are fragments of our history. So 
this is a very important conversation to have. Uh, there's also the bigger challenge here. Uh, some governments where these artifacts are at the moment uh, give conditions to countries before they are released. Uh, we've also seen where others have decided to take legal matters. For instance, in Thailand, they've had to go to court to get some of their artifacts from around the world. Uh, and as a result, you see countries deciding to take the step to say, we would return uh, your stolen artifacts to you, even though some have refused to recognize them as those that they were stolen brazenly from these countries. Yes, and uh, it's interesting to note that the discussions or the parley around the re restitution of these artifacts has been going on for some time. Um, and I think it was stated earlier that um, I think during this parley that uh, Governor Obaseki says as a government, they, they want to re retrieve these artifacts. He's been at the forefront of trying to recover these artifacts because he says that they're evidence of the identity of the Edo people. Um, and in his own words, he says, um, culture is a living thing. The artifacts as we are dealing with today are a repetition of our culture at a certain point in time. Uh, so this is maybe where, it's, it, even though we're discussing who would take, whose rightful custody these artifacts should belong to, we still, it's a joyful thing that we've reached the point where we're actually discussing the retrieval of these artifacts in the first place. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I can I also recall that it comes at a time where nations grapple with uh, histories of racial injustice. Uh, we have seen increasingly protest movement uh, toppling statues and a call mm. for recovery of stolen items during yes. colonial rule. Again, this is a very important conversation to have. Uh, we get to hear the federal government comment on this, although at the moment we do know that the governor, Governor Godwin Obasaki, and uh, the Minister of Information and Culture, La Mohammed, are presently in Germany. Oh, good. Uh, uh, having conversations about, you know, returning these artifacts. Yes, and some of what has been said, at least that's been documented, is that, um, that they believe the collaboration should transcend not just to returning the works, but also to understanding the significance and meaning of those works from our history. So uh, clearly there's more to just who will take ownership of these artifacts, but also in educating the generations to come about a part of their history that they may have lost out on due to the absence of these artifacts on home soil. It also speaks to the condition of our existing museums. Where do we keep these uh, priceless treasures, these cultural treasures? How would they be kept? How have they been kept? The ones we have, you know, how well have we, we you know, kept them? And then, so conversations around that as well. There's the debate uh, for conditionality to say uh, these countries cannot preserve this artifact. Talking about the countries of host at the moment saying, we have kept this artifact better. We only want to return them back to you on loan. Uh, there are several conditions depending on the country you're looking at. Uh, because you know we, we feel like we have kept them better because of how uh, the materials they're made out of. Mm. So again, it calls the question, what museums do we have? What's the quality? How efficient are they? Are we, you know, having that conversation? How important truly really are these to us? Is it just about having the artifacts back? What do we do with them when they are back? Yes, um, I know some have been very passionate about arguing from the other perspective to say, well, they're ours. Let us have that conversation. We won't have you exactly. who stole them from us. Tell us to how us. to. Um, but having said that, um, there's a, a statement here that I'm looking at, Dr. Andreas Gorgon, who from Germany, the German side, who pledged to collaborate with you know, uh, the Edo state government and the monarchy to organize joint skills program and explore archaeological sites and ensure the retrieval of objects. So they're looking ahead to some sort of a, a cross-border collaboration to preserving these artifacts and also to building up uh, some kind of value system among those uh, who will be in contact with these artifacts to appreciate what we have. It, it's ironic, really, because um, Shaitan did a piece on museums recently mm -hmm. and it was ironic to note that the person who was managing a, a certain museum was a foreign uh, foreign uh, well you could say resident um, and he seemed to be able to tell us more about our own um, history and our artifacts and maybe some of us would have known um, 
without his maybe taking that interest. British why are you by your wife? Ninety so, well, joining us in the studio is the Rise Business Analyst, Rochus Oduri. Rochus, uh, Eken and I have just been uh, having a conversation of how significant this is uh, for not just uh, the Benin people or Edo people, but Nigeria in general. Return of artifacts, uh, Rochus Oduri. Uh, your take. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, it's pretty interesting. I mean, what I pref uh, what really stands out. You, everyone's got to read the uh, front page, the article in today's this day. Um, essentially, with Governor Obaseki wanting to uh, wanting to uh, have the trust, put these these items in a trust, and the Benin monarch saying no. It needs to come back to the origins where the Europeans looted these items from. This what a thousand three hundred and ten. Uh, I believe uh, of these artifacts, and so the monarch. I believe they, they they've got a point. Um, if if you know, I can imagine. Bor well, it's Boris Johnson's a prime minister, but imagine the mayor of London trying to argue with uh, the Queen about artifacts that were looted from the from from uh, the uh, Buckingham, Palace. Palace. Buckingham Palace. Where would they go? Would you want to put them in a trust elsewhere or return them back to the origin? So, it's a very in-depth article here that really touches on all the points. I understand Lai Mohammed was in Berlin yesterday to speak with uh, German officials about making sure that they get them back. So. It should, it should go back a to the palace. Of national interest. Exactly. Yes. exactly. I, I would like to think, but I look forward to seeing how this situation evolves. I would like to think it's just a matter of presumption and, and, and maybe procedural issues rather mm. than um, denying the fact that the artifacts truly belong to the monarch because I think that should be a clear enough point to make. Um, so maybe, maybe the preoccupation now is when the artifacts come back, how can they be preserved and looked after? You know, in what way? And we have a collaborative effort at ensuring that they're well preserved in a way that ensures the posterity of the particular history they document. And they should be monetized. I mean, that's that's my angle. They have to be monetized. <laughs> as be in there. tourist visits, as in everyone gets to see them. They definitely. So I think um, that's. And if you again, if you check out the uh, the this day piece on on this particular matter. They, these artifacts, if you think about the exchange rates and what they will be valued. In fact, I understand, according to the article, that uh, the German government is going to make a 4.5 million euro donation to the Edo Museum of West African Arts and Culture um, projects to be built in Benin City. So I think that's part of the, that's where the motivation for the governor is coming from with respect to trying to get that private trust uh, put in place. So. The value, I think, is what's causing this um, this back and forth. But again, uh, you know, considering what's the word? Is it conservatorship? Uh, consider, considering the where, where the origins of where they were taken from, um, 
I think the monarchs got uh, the, the, winning winning argument. Argument. the monarchs got the argument, mm. but uh, I guess Obaske is trying to wheel and deal with respect to um, getting that private trust set up. And you know, the, we we're just talking about the, I mean, the value that is artifacts will bring because uh, these countries where they are, they are on display in, in public museums. Mm -hmm. They're generating mm -hmm. monies for the governments where they are. And that's why some people have said, you know, the bigger fight here is not just only to have the artifacts back, but to even take that step forward to sue this government because you made money from the artifacts. Okay. How about you pay us uh, for the damage, even though the compensation can never be enough. This is history being stolen. This is tradition, culture. You took away from the people forcefully. So there'll be no amount of compensation. However, we do know that you've made monies from these artifacts, pay us for it. Yes. Well, I think that's where the 4.5 million euro donation is coming in. <laughs> it's like, look at what doing a preemptive um, strike. Right, right. <laughs> and plus, I think um, the, um, Germany's um, Nigeria's ambassador to Germany, Mr. Yusuf uh, uh, Tugla, uh, said this issue of, of repatriation between both countries um, is an opportunity to take the uh, cooperation between Nigeria and Germany to a greater height. Okay. Um, uh, Lai Mohammed talked about that. So they're trying to make sure that this is sorted out on an amicable base. Uh, and of course, I think, you know, hey, 4.5 euros, hmm. that's, uh, that's in the billions, okay? So, and that will go a long way in getting this um, this project that Vasquez plans to get off, off the ground uh, together. So, yeah, so I think they do want to make sure that this is done on an amicable basis, that everybody's friendly and, and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, um, suing suing the German government, uh, I don't think would uh, would play out well because it looks like the, everyone's, the talks that are taking place have gone beyond that. Yeah, exactly. oh, but it's not just Germany. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's France passed involved, all over the, the world. Yep, yep, yep. But we have Europeans. seen countries who have done it. We've, we've seen Thailand. Successfully. And successfully, mm. uh, Thailand has ha had to go the legal route and then had some of the artifacts back and, yes. and getting reparations. Yes. Indeed, uh, indeed, uh, indeed. Uh, well, Again, with the high-level talks that are taking place right now, I don't know, I think uh, it's... I, I, I take we just the want the artifacts back. <laughs> exactly. And Let's the 4.5 million... Let's million, have the artifacts back. And the 4.5 million euros uh, in order to, you know, for the for the uh, products to get off, get off the ground. So, yeah, that, I think, will go a long way. And I wonder how much of an incentive or a disincentive, depending, those watching who are still holding on to our artifacts around yes. the world, yes. uh, Britain, Watching this particular, how it plays out, mm. whether it will motivate them to say, we will go, the, we'll follow suit, we'll mm. do the same as Germany has done, and we will take the initiative to say, here are your artifacts back, plus the donation. Excellent point, excellent point. That we should open the door. Um, in fact, since as Lai Mohammed is in Europe right now, you should actually take this opportunity to actually engage other countries. Lady and gentlemen, this is the <laughs> finest you would ever see. The Benin tradition, the Benin culture on display. Yes. The Oba of Benin, Oba Eware the second, is dancing. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yes. Nollywood needs to jump on this matter. If we wouldn't want to watch a two hour movie or an hour and a half film, based on the on what's taking place here and from the 19th century up until now getting these artifacts back there's a there's a whole lot of, of history here that should be on screen and again should be promoting nigerian culture around the world with respect to what's been going on this and is, again, it's pretty it, it, it's pretty it's lovely to take it yeah and, and again it's a reminder that actually this is a cause for celebration i know we're talking about the disputes more than we're actually maybe acknowledging the fact that this is a landmark event mm. Mm. that the artifacts are coming home you know not just football that's coming home now the artifacts are making their way to home soil finally yeah. after so many years and the money and the money <laughs> as a business and the money, and the money. yeah bring, bring the money because yes. yeah exactly mm. That is one nice looking uh, palace, I have to say. Yes, I yes, would trade places with Christian Ogudu uh, at this point in time. A gorgeous uh, looking hall where you've got everyone there. Okay, so he's still, of course, uh, speaking in the uh, native tongue. Um, but. I, I do hope that things move quickly from this point on because, you know, you've gotten the royal family involved, you've gotten high-level government officials involved. This has risked the highest levels of government, Minister of Information and Culture involving the Europeans. So at this point, you know, um, 
Yeah, we'll, we've got we'll, we've got to see some progress in the next uh, within the next, next few days. Hours, even. Yeah, right. So mm. we, we should. We mm. definitely should. Mm. Mm. And you know, the, <sighs> tourism, tourism, tourism. Mm. Uh, earlier, I was talking with Body of Shoshimi about um, with the UK opening up, restri uh, reducing travel curbs mm. um, from the amber list cities and so on and so forth. Travel bookings spiking, right? Yeah, yeah. This. I mean, Nigeria, when you think about all the economic touch points and metrics that can be used to boost FX foreign exchanges, this, this, this is what you're watching now. I mean, look, who wouldn't want to tour the Obas Palace and pay a um, entry fee to look around? I mean, look at, look at his throne. <laughs> yes. I call it a throne. Look at where, you know, it's, yes, it's, it's a throne. It is. I mean, look at that. It's, yeah. it's, it's, anyone, any foreigner would pay money to come in here and take and uh, and, and look around. So with the artifacts coming in, it, there's there's a tourism angle to this and and uh, uh, for, foreign exchange boost at, uh, to some level. Uh, your with your brain is just doing the arithmetic. Oh yeah, I mean it's, yeah, it's, it's huge, you know. So I, I, I mean, a lot of people have said that because of the state of insecurity, that somehow tourism shouldn't be on the menu. But mm. I, I beg to differ. I think if if tourism is pushed to the four, it might just drive back all the distractions of, because the very same people, the youths they say are being used to fuel insecurity, you could divert their energies of to being part of that tourist that market. Excellent point. The, 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 the uh, tourism dollars that are this is the opportunity, because what it is that you're losing right now, is to be an incentive to depress uh, uh, insecurity, so you can get more. This is summer. This is this is July. Mm -hmm. People Travel are period. traveling. Yeah. yeah, Kenya is looking for the, the Masai Mara, the the, tour, the wildlife there. Kenya is looking forward to an influx of, of Europeans and Americans coming in to come and take uh, uh, travel tours there. So. We, you know, we, we definitely want to take advantage. Hey, you just said business just now. Did you hear him? I just heard him say business and companies. I think it's, yeah, so. it's reading your mind. Yes, and it's interesting because recently Leila Johnson Salami was making the point about you know, the wildlife, the wildlife and, special report. Yes, and saying that yes. you know it actually makes business sense to instead of conducting illegal trade, why don't we legitimize it? We would actually make much more money from that side than what we're making from illegal trading. You just need to educate people because the fallout of going down the road of like you were saying, um, maybe creating some sort of reserve where people can come and view this, the employment fallout, mm -hmm. all these have a build-up that is far more um, significant than what people will make from oh, yes. legal trading. Oh, yes. Oh, well, yes. Uh, Rochus, we are talking about touring the Obers Palace. Well, I don't know about that because there's a sanctity to this palace. Mm. It's not open to the entire public. We do like uh, but I do understand the, the richness <laughs> of the Benin culture. Yes. Uh, the irony of all of this is that the Europeans uh, thought that we were barbaric and worshipping idols, yet they stole the artifact. <laughs> Well, it was yeah. in the 19th century, so that was quite a long time ago, and they, they, they uh, you know, the um, perception of you know, Africa at that time were, of course, very backward mm. with the way they were, they, they viewed us. Of course, like you said, they viewed us in a backward manner, but they, they was, it wasn't backward to steal our values, yes. right? So um, that, of course, uh, that definitely has changed. I do like the level of engagement with Germany, though, um, mm. on a diplomatic level, and so, you know, that's tells you how far things have come and um, where where things are going. So again, I just, I really, really hope that this, um, you see, saying this now, I kind of now see the argument that uh, Governor Basaki is pushing with the trust and all that to put the, I, I see that, but you know, again, it's the, the monarch, the prevailing argument is with the royal family. Yes. That's where the prevailing argument is. And I still think that that's where, you know, you can still, Despite mm -hmm. the private sector participation and what can be gleaned mm. from the artifacts being on display, it's still the monarch still has the I think the, the, the powerful argument here. And who's to say the monarch may not resort to uh, establishing a trust himself? If, right, anybody if, can. If you speak yeah, to exactly. him right, right, in a right. way that makes sense, he may say, "Well, I'll set up As a trust." As the owner of the yeah. returned artifact, yes, mm. exactly. stolen artifact, yes. yes. Why do you do 
Again, if you've just joined us, you are watching live broadcast from the palace of the Oba of Benin, Oba Eware II, Omonoba Nedo Ukwa Polo Polo. He is addressing his kinsmen in the Benin language. Uh, anytime from now, any moment from now, he promises to also address the world uh, in English. Uh, we're waiting for that to happen, but we do understand uh, this has been called uh, regarding the uh, proposed return of the looted artifacts uh, from the kingdom uh, many, many years ago. Mm. Where nobody is perfect. So why he just said nobody is perfect, you you uh, you can assume. Would you be generous enough to apply that to the Europeans when they took the artifact that no one's perfect, you made a mistake and uh, we understand, just bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> like, Just bring them back. No one's perfect. You stole possibly billions of worth of artifacts from us. No one's perfect, but just bring them back. Uh, it's just the and problem that this down. particular imperfection had um, significant costly ramifications. So oh, you yes. still want to add on, okay, bring them back plus. Exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, we Mark Walker. Walker was one of the British officers that came in 1897. Great grandson of Ena Hina. Ona wetin can return because if we ma yo return eh. Ena na return eh. Ena Okay, Mark Walker, presenting the broadcast of the bed of prophecy and the bell to the upper of Benin or by Radio 2012-2013. Very recent. 2013, to be very precise. We were all witness to it. It was not taken to anywhere else. And he said, no, 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 this was the broadcast that was returned by Mark Walker in 2013. When there is no one in Frank, when there is no one in now. Why am I here? If you don't come away, you're not this. 
Is it on the service? Oh, yeah. Am I deteriorate? Uh-huh. But I'm waiting at you, I'll do all flunky. Most of the time. That's not my head. Put that down, put that down. Okay. Not the man, no. Stand there. Uh-huh. Where would you say, I've been here again, see? What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you? And the bell, the bell of prophecy, and the bell. Okay. Yeah, there you Not down here, Gwai. Down here, Gwai. I think what we've just witnessed was a display of buttressing the point of the monarchy here, saying that we can keep these artifacts when returned. We know how to keep them because they are ours. What was on display was uh, the bird of prophecy returned by Mark Walker, who interestingly was the grandson of a walker who had been pa part of the invasion in Benin City. Uh, he also returned in 2013 uh, the bell, like I said, the bell of prophecy, and of course, uh, and other items there to the Benin Kingdom. So he's building his argument. Um, and there was a gourd or a picture of mm -hmm. that to uh, displaying that, but displaying him, it was in the, the gentleman in the suit and the glasses uh, in that photograph, which was displayed around the hall there, uh, to everyone to see that, yes, you know, this is what was, uh, was returned. Gorgeous pieces, though, yeah? The bell and the... The uh, bed of prophecy. And the bell and the bird, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Again, I'm thinking of a movie. The bird of prophecy, a history of, you know... The bird of prophecy, the return, if you will. <laughs> He's got so many artifacts surrounding him. Even at to his left, uh, you'll see a mini statue there. If the camera pan... There it is. Look at there. See, the, the that's like a town crier in front of the flag. And then there's two more artifacts behind that uh, cry again. It's just rich with uh, history and artifacts in that in that palace. And that's just this is just we're just seeing just two items sitting next to him as he speaks. That's again the oba. Uh, so much more, so much more. That's inventory right there mm -hmm. for the for the palace. <laughs> You know, with Tamira again, where you know, it was you anyway. Yadi cannot give it enough. The cardio band, no one give you give it enough. I'm going to mark my queen Nigeria. Yo, now I'm where now I'm where now I'm not viva. Ekme, Ekme Noah, not viva. Now I'm sir. You more baggy, Oban or Sweden. Norway, King of Sweden, King of Norway, the Queen of Denmark. Finland, So, 
Collaborate with the palace. We don't know anything. And I want to collaborate, collaborate with the palace, collaborate with the palace. Men are having men doing collaboration of you know. But Imam, 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 you know what? Who do we? Men are home. And we are moving to a park ball near the Legacy Restoration Trust. Bena 
you know where why we you know you know we win ambassador ni you have me mama e mi so uwe aka aka lai 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 re lai 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 di ala di agbalo tona agbalo tona e ma na agugwa na ya di ami na ya dole mi yi awe ka bo hi ana ya dole mi is it meze hi ya hi ya hi ya amaze yo when you ni ka we amaze yo And I wear all can get any way. Anyway, do I who wear? I didn't know Give me near home, give me near home. I didn't want to collaborate with a guy. Why give me a boy? You know, you want to go. still watching live broadcasts from Benin City, capital of Edo State, to be precise, the palace of the Oba, Oba Iwari the second, Omo Noba Nedo Kwapolo Polo. Uh, he's been addressing issues. Uh, Roches and Ikene looking at me waiting for that translation. <laughs> I am not <laughs> Benin. But... Bring the artifacts <laughs> back. That's the translation. Bring them back to the palace. Yeah, that's the only translation yeah, that matters and, at this exactly. point. Yeah. Bring yeah. the yeah. artifacts right. back. And you know, we, he, from the little I was able to pick, mm -hmm. uh, he was talking about why is there so much emphasis on collaboration uh, when some of these artifacts, because artifacts have actually been returned yeah. uh, previously. Yes. Uh, we even had the secretary to the count to the palace say twice now. Oh, yeah. However, the last one was in 2013 by uh, Mr. Walker, who returned the yeah. bird of prophecy yeah. mm -hmm. and, of course, the bell, which was on display moments ago. Although yes. at that time it was his father before he went to join his ancestors, or by Eredoa, uh, the second, the second at that time, who received uh, Mr. Walker and collected yeah. those artifacts. Of course, we. Also also saw evidence of that. There was a picture of Paul Walker, of Mr. Walker uh, handing those artifacts back to them. So he's saying, why is everybody suddenly talking about? Why is there to talk about collaborating with the what's, palace? What's new about? It's, what's there's happened? nothing new. Just return the artifacts give to where they were stolen from. Give exactly. Me back my stuff. Just put it simply. Me. Give it back to me. It belongs that's to me, it. Yes, and I can it. take care of that. That's also very important because that was the emphasis of that display to say mm. we can take care of them. Yes. And I, I did think that the artifact looked, you know, in as good new, condition. very great conditions, you know, and but they. Centuries old. Yes, yes, indeed. Fascinating. And like you say, Oba Eredua was uh, the second, was the 39th Oba of Benin, and uh, he died in 2016 after ruling for 37 years. Um, you know, again, it would be curious to know how many artifacts have been returned over the years, because the argument may still be that returning a few artifacts is not the same as a thousand and uh, Rutus was giving us. Uh, so it would be good to know how many artifacts have been returned over the years, and if, you know, that poses a challenge for the Oba to maintain all these artifacts. Exactly. Um, Does anyone wonder what breed of bird the bird of prophecy like is eagle. modeled after? The beak is really large, so it looks like, I don't know, I was looking it up, it looks like a, a, a toucan, a toko toucan. But the which, wings reminded me of an eagle's. Uh, the eagle's, yeah? Mm. Which ties back to Leila Johnson Salami's special on endangered uh, species. Remember, uh, uh, what did Leila say? Ekbe is supposed to be a land of water buffaloes or something, which are no longer in that area. So who knows? That bird of prophecy could be an extinct. Exactly. Fascinating. Based on what were, what birds are available in here in Benin or Edo, or what was Edo State back in the 19th century? I can't get over his throne. That is a lovely looking throne. 
For the benefit of uh, those that didn't understand the, uh, our language, I have a written statement in English which have mandated the Iyase, the Iyase of Bini Kingdom, to read out on my behalf. I don't understand Bini and in diaspora, everywhere. So there's a short statement, but I've explained a whole lot to my people now. I think I can, I can go and sleep well, because I've left the matter in everybody's hands. So we to Gentlemen of the press. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the ERC have been mandated to read the statements from His Royal Majesty.
this. About up a This is a statement at the meeting of His Royal Majesty Omonobanedu a while the second of our Benin with palace chiefs and Enigie on the repatriation of the looted Beni artifacts. In the name of God and our ancestors, I welcome you all and thank you all for honoring the invitation. I have called this meeting today to intimate you of the matter of the Bini artifacts in Europe at the verge of being repatriated, which I am sure you have heard and read about in recent weeks. You may also have heard about the recent activities of a group of individuals who incorporated a company since January 2020 called Legacy Restoration Trusts Limited. It has become germane to note that the advocacy and demands for the return of the artifacts looted from the Benin Kingdom in 1897 have been going on for decades before the emergence of the incumbent go governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Obaseki. I must sincerely thank the governor for joining the struggle and showing commitment to retrieve our stolen cultural heritage from Europe. With anticipating, while anticipating the return of the looted artifacts from Europe, I want to note that attempts to divert the destination of the right of custody of the artifacts is not in the interest of the Benin Kingdom, to whom the palace of the Oba of Benin provides leadership. The looted artifacts awaiting repatriation from Europe are the cultural heritage of the Benin Kingdom created by our ancestors and forefathers within the traditional norms and rights of the kingdom. They are not property of the state government or any private corporation entity that is not create a creation of the Benin Kingdom. The right and only legitimate destination of the artifacts to be repatriated as already pronounced by my father is under the edges of the Benin Royal Museum that will be cited within the precincts of the palace of the Oba of Benin from where they were stolen. And also the property and also the proper traditional institution that is also the custodian of all cultural heritage of the Benin Kingdom. The palace therefore strongly advises that any one group, organization, or the government, national and international, that is dealing with any organization or artificial group in the process of returning the looted artifacts from Benin, will be doing so at their own risk against the will of the people of Benin Kingdom. There is no alternative native authority or custodian of the cultural heritage of Benin Kingdom outside the Oba of Benin as constituted by the Royal Palace. I do not believe that the motive 
by a privately registered company, the Legacy Restoration Trust Limited, and the purported establishment of a Do Museum of West African Arts, MOA, are in consonance, are in consonance with the wishes of the people of Benin Kingdom. It is pertinent to note that shortly after my accession to the throne, I had several discussions with the governor on the plan of the Benin Royal Museum, and he expressed, and he expressed his readiness to work with the palace to actualize this laudable wish of my father. I made efforts and acquired additional plots of land from different families within the Adesobe area near the present day palace for this purpose. I was, however, surprised to read from the governor's letter to the palace where reference was made to the fact that a new museum to be known as MOA is now being proposed, which will be funded and executed through the vehicle of another body now referred to as Legacy Restoration Trust. When Governor Godwin Obaseki informed me in the correspondence of another implementation framework using the so-called Legacy Restoration Trust and the Edo Museum of West African Arts, MOA, my response was that the setting up of another organization or legal entity in whatever form or guise will not be necessary for, for no, will not be necessary nor acceptable. I informed him that the that Obayawide, the second foundation, has been registered with the CAC and has worked out a framework for not only receiving the artifacts but also building a modern structure, the Benin Royal Museum, within the precincts of the palace. And that, and that land has been secured for the building of the Benin Royal Museum under the supervision of the traditional institution. But for reasons best known to him, the governor has gone against the understanding given, ascent, given recent events. As a matter of fact, the people of Benin Kingdom and other stakeholders, especially the Benin Dialogue Group, has a different meeting, has at different meetings endorsed the Benin Royal Museum to be built within the palace, as well as endorsing the Obaiwari Second, the Second Foundation for fundraising and other requisite administrative processes. We wish to use this museum. We wish to, have, to use this medium to call on the federal government to take custody of these artifacts on behalf of the palace until the Benin Royal Museum is ready for their collection. Under no circumstances should custody of our age-old artifacts be handed to any privately contrived entity like the Legacy Restoration Trust. Thankfully, just yesterday, I spoke with the Honorable Minister for Information and Culture, who presently, in Germany, over the negotiation with the German government over the plans for the repatriation of our artifacts, he assured me that the federal government remain committed to get the unconditional return of our artifacts and will guarantee its full custody for their onward transmission to Benin Kingdom to the exclusion of any 
unauthorized private entities or third parties. We once again thank the federal government for this commitment. It now, be, it now behoves the federal government to be the only level of government that can take custody of the artifacts with a view to transferring them to their original owner and their original place of abode. More so that there exists external treaties and laws guiding these processes. The Palace of the Oba of Benin wishes to advise His Excellency, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, Governor of Edo State, to review his approach of using private vehicle of legacy of Legacy Trust Limited and the Edo Museum of West African Art, Emowa, and to see how he can genuinely collaborate with the Oba with the upper palace in accordance with our original understanding. We thank the German government for their interest in willing and willingness to return the Benin artifacts. We pray to God and our ancestors for a fruitful resolution of this issue. Thank you. About I <laughs> We have a guy that can hear you, don't he? On a is over at the way that Maseo enabled a one on one interview with the upper of Benin, which is very rare. And that Maseo and Babana. So, I had a point senior in the Arise TV and other crew. Members of the crew and the Rewana, the media houses here, now may now get one on one interview with the Oba of the Great Benin Kingdom. Ike Kiwani with no heke. Oba Tope. Yes, please let's proceed. Truly historic moment we are witnessing here, Rotus Ikene. We've been listening to the ESL Benin, who's the traditional prime minister, uh, communicates what the Oba has been uh, talking about in the last uh, one hour plus in the Benin language, uh, basically saying that uh, reparation of the looted Benin facts, uh, artifacts should return to the palace. Where yes. It belongs. Yes, indeed, and uh, it's notable that this 91-year-old traditional uh, prime minister 
was able to, not able to prostrate before the Oba because no. of his age. Um, but some of the things that struck me from what he said was... How old is he? You should let everyone know how old he 91 is. 91 year old. Nine, yes. And, you and real, for emphasis. articulate and, you know... <laughs> yes, very sound of, of, of the mind. Very well. yep, but, yep, but what yep. stood out for me from what he was saying was that there seemed to have been a pre-existing agreement between the Oba and Governor Baseki at the yes. onset. Indeed, he welcomed... Uh, the governor's interest in supporting what he said was an existing desire of his to retrieve the artifacts and went ahead to make uh, arrangements to so that when the artifacts were recovered, he bought extra plots of land or added extra plots of land for the purpose of uh, having that museum set up. So he, as far as that uh, um, discourse is or what was said is concerned, he was fully anticipating that the artifacts would be returned to him. And it came as a surprise to him to learn of these new arrangements of a trust having been set up and a, a, a different museum being as established as well. Right. And again, I, I, I do encourage uh, all our, our viewers to uh, read that front page article in this day newspaper. It's really in depth. And he, they mentioned the company, they mentioned it pretty legacy restoration trust, and they made it clear that, uh, that, and in fact, what would he, in fact, in specific words, he said anyone who's doing any dealings with legacy or any other company purporting to be working on behalf of getting those artifacts back, you're doing it at your own risk. They have to come back to the palace and go nowhere else. So that Indeed. statement, uh, <laughs> it could, he couldn't have been any more clear, the Oba, with yeah. respect to that. Indeed. I, I, you know, he says, uh, this is the cultural heritage of the Benin people. They're not property of the state government. Those are the words of the Oba there, uh, read out loudly by the ESL Benin, again, the traditional <coughs> prime minister. They are not the property of the state government or any private entity. This, the, the, I, you know, he, he says it clearly. Mm. Uh, there, there were plans, uh, Kenny, like you had mentioned, and this plans even date back to his father's reign. Mm -hmm. uh, there were plans to set up a museum in the palace. Uh, talking about Oba uh, Eregiawa II, who has gone joined his ancestors. Uh, and he wonders why, after that conversation, uh, notifying the governor, incumbent governor, to say, we would like to have the palace uh, have a museum. It's called, uh, if I can get the name, oh, the Benin the Royal Museum yeah. is what it should be called. Mm. He's surprised that the governor went ahead to float a private entity. Yes, indeed, indeed. And um, he says the Legacy Restoration Trust Limited um, and the, the activities of the Legacy Restoration Trust Limited are not in consonance with the legacy of Benin Kingdom. The he wishes made that of clear. the Benin people. Yeah. Let's return now. We are having the very rare historic one on one interview with Rise News and the About Benin. And as Christian Ogodo, I have the honor and privilege of having a one on one interview with His Majesty. Your Majesty. Well, this is no longer one-on-one -on -one with everybody here now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what uh, your Secretary <laughs> chose, Your Majesty. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Your Majesty, I will start first with this brewing controversy. In your speech, you said, having spoken to your chiefs, uh, to um, members of your kingdom, you feel very relieved. Do you think this issue about the repatriation of the artifacts from some European countries like Germany, France, and others will um, be domiciled in the museum that you have proposed, even before you ascending the throne, Your Majesty. Thank you very much. First of all, let me say that there is no controversy but this matter is a straightforward subject matter. As I said in, uh, in that one, I want to correct that impression that there's controversy between the palace and the, and the state government or, the, or, or uh, our state governor. Like, uh, like, I, like I said, I, I, I asked my chiefs to be very, to be very prayerful. I asked the chiefs, are we okay? Are we okay? There's no controversy. I don't see anything as controversial in this matter. It's a straightforward subject matter. We made that very clear. Um, perhaps 
there's a, communi a, 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 a bridge of communication, there's communication gap, there's a little bit of misunderstanding, not on our side, but on the state, on the side of the state government or on the, on the side of Mr. Governor Obaseki, you know, His Excellency, the, uh, the governor, which I said we should pray for. That's why I, I, I repeated and insisted that we, we all, all of us need prayers for a peaceful resolution of this uh, misunderstanding. Because we had that understanding from the very beginning that it shall be Benin Royal Museum as, as uh, recommended, uh, in fact, uh, pronounced by my father, not even by me, by my father. And I am following the footsteps of my father. You know, so there's, uh, there's, there's no controversy at all. And uh, the other question you asked about the, the, the international community, we we have said our peace. We have made it clear to them. It's a straightforward matter. The Benin people have spoken. The chiefs have spoken. The royal family, they have all spoken. Uh, the youths have spoken. There's no controversy. They, if they, they say, um, you know, there's, there's that part. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a Pentecostal uh, Christian, but there's, there's that uh, part of the Bible. Let those that have ears here. We are sitting here. Let them hear. Let them hear. And uh, uh, we, we, we have made our position clear. You know, I'm following my father's footsteps, following my ancestors' footsteps. It is, this is not my, it is not just only my, my call. It's not only my statement. It's the statement of the entire Benin people. It's a statement of the entire Benin people. You cannot, uh, you cannot expect the artifacts to go elsewhere other than where it was taken from. It's, it's, just a, it's just a given. So I think the international community will be wise. You know, uh, you know, you know. Last year, when I intervened in that political problem they were having, do 2020 and all that. We thank God that there was peace. Uh, peace reigned and there was no, no bullet fired. And the next day or two days after, uh, there was a publication in the Vanguard and the Nation, I think. Each one of them, I was surprised, they dubbed me the king of peace. So we are peaceful people. We, we don't need to say it ourselves. People have recognized that. That we like peace. We don't like controversy. We like peaceful resolution. Without peace, there's no development. Without peace, you cannot enjoy yourself. You cannot enjoy yourself when, you are quarreling, when there's quarrel. You know, you, you need to you need to party traditional manner. You need to you know have groups come and entertain people, drink, marry. But we, we we are not happy that. You know, the, you know, first of all, I tackled the issue of uh, human trafficking before me. Um, I had to come out and speak. Then the next was, uh, let me say, first of all, the CDA issue, you know, and then the human trafficking issue. Everybody came running to, you know, to me in the end. is uh, NAPTIP, DG, you know, I made a representation and appealed to me to please speak so that I can control those native doctors that uh, they talked about. I said, okay, I will. And I came out because they were rubbishing the image of Benin. And I can't stand here and let them rubbish the image of my, of my, of my people. You know, so we have to do something about it like that has never been done. Even the chiefs were surprised what I did. That they, they never knew that we had such, such a, a traditional devices that could uh, command. I told them all the native doctors here are uh, under our control. You know, those that don't want to be under our control will go to hell. You know, they go, they go to hell fire, hell hole as, a, as the Pentecostal <laughs> Christians we. So we advise them to stay action, to stay away from uh, holding these people to ransom, these girls to ransom and making them swear oath, take oath, and let them, so that they can feel free to speak to, uh, to NAPTIP and anti uh, human trafficking uh, agencies and all that. So the same thing, what I'm saying here is, is peace. Pray for the governor, perhaps there's, 
there's, there, there, there are some unscrupulous people. You know, you know, they say money is the root of all evil. You know, uh, you know the information I'm getting is a lot. I don't want to say it all here. Information I'm getting is a lot, but bottom line of it is that there seems to be monetary attraction, financial attraction in, inside of all these schemes. Financial attraction. And everybody can still gain if you go the right way. God will bless you. If you go the right way, God will bless you. Go the, 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 the demonic way, the Satan way, to be, to, 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 uh, to, be, to be greedy and do the wrong things, God will judge the person. So Ruben, that's what I, yes. Thanks very much uh, for that elaborate uh, answer there. There is another issue, uh, whether you see it as funny or controversial again, it's another point. Because you talked about financial inducement, attractions, you know. With these artifacts being returned, a company has been registered called Legacy Restoration Trust. And you have another one, Legal Restoration Trust. Aren't you worried about this? Or are these the kind of financial inducement that you think is driving the repatriation of these artifacts instead of coming to the palace, then um, the body wants to hijack it. How worried are you about that? Well, I, um, I thank you for that, uh, that question. But I think the question answers itself already. You know, um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know anything about legacy trust, uh, uh, restoration trust is, is not, is not uh, we are not part of it. We don't know much, what, what, we don't know what is going on. We don't know what they are doing. They know what they are doing. But our concern and our focus is that the artifacts were taken from the palace many years ago, over 100 years ago. And they cannot, you have heard the people that represent a larger group of the entire kingdom. That's what you see here. That's what you see here. The whole palace out there can be filled up with much more. But you heard the people where the things were taken from must come back to the same to the same place. I'm, I don't know. I can't really comment on the uh, the the financial uh, motive of uh, legacy trust or restoration trust. Or something I don't even remember the, the names properly. You know. Um, I don't know. I don't know what their financial plan is about. You cannot have financial plan about our artifacts. That's not possible. So those those that, that want to look at it like that, they are being misled. That's why I said we should pray. We should pray for them. Yes. Um, Your Royal Majesty, in praying for them, is the issue again, your emphasis anyway is that, look, these artifacts were stolen, plundered from the palace here. So therefore, they must be returned here. And you said even your forebear had earmarked a land for it. What do you say about the proposed Edo West African? Uh, again, again, palace? again, we are not. Again, it's strange. That is also, as I already said it in the statement. That is already strange. That is also strange to us. That is not what I discussed with Mr. Uh, Mr. Governor right from the beginning. What I discussed with him was Benin Royal Museum. He knows that if he steps in here, if we are here together now, I will remind him. I will remind him that we are great Tiderio. In my way, about Tiderio, meaning what did we discuss that time? Was it a MOA? Was it a legacy? No, you cannot say that we discussed that with me. So everything that you are asking now is contained in my in the statement the years I read. You know, so as I said, we are we, we don't know uh, we don't know a Moa. We cannot work with a Moa. Is a Benin Royal uh, Museum? What may I say? <laughs> Your Royal Majesty, this is a very rare opportunity. So uh, I, I usually don't give interviews, even at, you know, very usually. Well, but for for the for the prince, uh, you know, it's my it's, it's very close to me. You know, it's uh, so go ahead. Uh, just a final one, as uh, a king of peace, as you've now come 
to be known, you know, uh, far and wide. There is a big national issue that troubles the whole country. The issue of insecurity, yes. the issue of restructuring, you know, every group here and there. So it's like taking us to the period when we had the Midwest movement uh, there yes. under uh, your, your able yes. uh, ancestor of Akenzua and other notable uh, Edo now Delta people. What are your thoughts about the call for restructuring? What were your thoughts? How would you advise government about the issues of insecurity, kidnapping, banditry that pervades the entire country? Uh, thank you very much. Say, thank you very much. This is outside of the uh, what you have in there. That, you know, that, the last one. You know, you just. Now, the, the, thank you very much for the for the question. But see, we we were trained when it comes to matter of security. When it comes to the matter, when it comes to matter of security, we are we are actually trained. Up, hey. We are we, when it comes to the matter of security, we are trained not to comment in public on matter of security. You know that. Um, so whatever advice, observations I have, I will communicate it directly to the federal government of Nigeria. About okay. It is not that we are not concerned. We are very concerned going on. Um, then, um, as for the causes of uh, insecurity and the call for restructuring, le le let me just make an observation that in the entire country, in the entire country, we have several traditional institutions. Several traditional inst institutions that the came to meet. The major ones, of course, as we all, as everybody knows, is Benin Empire, the uh, Oyo Empire Ife, uh, the House of Fulani, and so on and so forth. But when the colonial people came, did all the, all the dastardly act they did to, to the country because they have taken a decision in Germany, the same Germany we are talking about, to share Africa. Um, they did it at will, without recourse, without, you know, without even recognition of the, uh, the cultural base of the, of the people they were meeting. Unfortunately for them, on getting to this part of, the, of Africa, they found strong traditional bases, tra traditional institutions. When they left after the independence, they handed over their style of administration to our people. Now, our people became the, the then governors or so, so and so forth, uh, and then until it transformed to presidential system, from parliamentary to uh, presidential system, which we have now. However, where I think the problem came about is when those that took over from the colonial people and were now practicing their style of administration, when they, when they begin to forget their base, when they begin to forget where they are coming from, where they will also go back to after four years or eight years as the case may be, then you have, you have these issues. You have a you have a, a schism between 
the people themselves. It becomes a, a, a difficult, uh, a difficult task to reconcile, and therefore, uh, restructuring the call for restructuring and so on and so forth, we begin to come up. It, it never came up at that time. So that's that's a, that's a brief, brief answer to it. Yes, it's deeper than that, but. I can, you know, in the in the, uh, in the situation we are in now, we need to. If we can adjust that, when you have traditional uh, uh, traditional chiefs that are members of the House of Rep or members of the Senate, they are chiefs. They are, they are they belong to to the old uh, colonial system or presidential system practice now, and they are also members of the traditional system. So they have to reconcile it. We have to, uh, this constitutional review, they have to really look at it very well, not to shy away from it. Look at it very well and come up with a constitution that really will reflect all of us, the unity of Nigeria, that will be able to unite Nigeria. That's what I think. I hope you are okay with that. <laughs> Well, we all know what the front pages will be tomorrow. They will be uh, curbing them from this um, the interview. Yeah, this Arise live exclusive. on Arise News exclusive interview by Arise there with the Oba of Benin. I want to thank all the members of the press. I think the Oba is still press. speaking. Let's go back in. I wish you all well. I have a about <laughs> Just giving a special vote of thanks there, the Oba of Benin, Oba Iwari II, uh, several hours, more than two hours live here, exclusive on Rise News. Again, just to reiterate what the Oba had said, uh, he says there's no controversy, although he says there's a lot of information, but he's not going to spill them here, uh, surrounding monies and the financial attraction to this artifact. Uh, he says uh, there's a breach, there might be a breach in communication on the part of the governor. Uh, he says it's a straightforward matter, there's no controversy. The artifacts should return to where they belong, oh, simple. Yeah. Yes, indeed, um, Adiswa, and he was at pains to reiterate that if the governor were present, he would remind him about what they discussed then, meaning that if there has been a departure from their earlier agreement, it hasn't been by him. Um, but what struck me, my takeaway from the Arise uh, exclusive, was the point he made at the latter part, although reluctantly, because he says he has been trained not to stray into issues of political affairs. But it was striking that he said he feels the schism between our governance as it exists today has come about because you've had a neglect of referencing the, the traditional rulers. And even began to suggest that if you had such representation in the House, in the National Assembly, that we would do well uh, to have that um, reconstituted. And while we're looking at the Constitution, we should hearken back to some of these things, that we shouldn't forget where we've come from, mm -hmm. that a lot of people in power have forgotten that they'll go back to where they came from. So very, very uh, profound uh, observations made by the Oba. Something on constitution review? 
Yes. So is that something we need to have? Yes, indeed. It's important to have that. Yes. Brutus? I'm waiting to hear from the governor. He has a lot to answer for at this mm -hmm. point to <laughs> clear up this misconception and misunderstanding on his part. So mm. you know, this, this, this story continues. Well, how fast the palace and the Oba is concerned is straightforward. Just return the artifacts to where they were taken. Uh, very curious to hear from the governor. A great interview there with Christian Abudu. Mm -hmm. But I just to add that the Oba doesn't sound combative at all. Indeed, he says we should pray for the governor. Mm -hmm. So he's we're a, hoping he's that an Oba of peace. peace. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and that's commendable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, he says uh, he is the Oba of Peace, and even going ahead to tell us why and how he's become the Oba of Peace, his previ previous intervention in bringing peace to the land. He talked about the uh, intervention in, in politics ahead of the Edo 2020 elections, and of course, his intervention in curtailing to a great extent the trafficking of young girls who, from Edo State, who are you know, sworn on the oath by force, uh, you know, by those who traffic them. And he says he had had to speak, and we all recall that story. The Oba says, I will lay a cause. Uh, the Oba of Benin uh, hardly curses, but he's seen as one who makes supplications to the ancestors and things happen. You know, but at that point he came and said, I would lay a cause on you if you do keep trafficking our young women, you know, on their different guises to other countries, subjecting them to in, inhumane practices. Yes, I mean, what comes across is that he's a very disciplined uh, individual and that he takes his role as custodian of uh, the Edo culture um, very seriously indeed. Um, so it's been a lesson for a lot of us watching because um, we didn't have this particular uh, unique insight into the workings of the Oba's palace. The Benin Royal Museum or nothing to house the artifacts uh, on the verge of uh, reparations back to the country. At the moment, we do know there's a delegation to Germany, including uh, the governor, Governor Godwin Obasaki, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed. So we wait to see. It's definitely not a story ending here. And like I said, we do know uh, what the, the headlines are going to be tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> so we'll be calling it from this extensive special coverage from the Oba's Palace, the Oba of Benin. A warrior the second i would have loved to ask him if in the you know he's maintaining that he will cite the museum on his premises whether he will give open access to the public mm. to be able to go and see those artifacts freely uh, is he planning to change that because you pointed out at this one that the Oba's palace and the way it's cited is, is sacred mm. so is he planning to open up that access so that the public and future generations can come and learn about the significance the Oba's palace is not just one standing structure is actually a land, l large uh, space of uh, large you know, expanse, expanse of land, of land yeah. you know, and there are other uh, houses actually sited in the compound where the Obers Palace is. So uh, he says his father had provisions for this. Okay. And he has acquired, recall he additional said during, uh, during his speech, that he has acquired additional land from uh, other families to ensure that this royal, Benin Royal Museum comes to fruition. Mm. So uh, for that plan to be in place, of course, he has thought about public thought about access. Public access. Mm. So everything seems to be in order. This was well thought out mm. and a very truly uh, superior okay. argument we've had. Uh, actually, it's not an argument. It's, 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 it's a, a statement. Fact. Yeah. It's a fact. It's a statement of fact. To actually, say, you know, it must return here. Yes. We indeed. have the capacity to have our artifacts back. Yes, and, and this strategy, if I may call it that, of having a world press you know, um, hearing. Truly historic. It really does seem to checkmate the governor, um, <laughs> you know, because it preempts and it goes ahead and establishes the authority under which he expects those artifacts to come back to him, okay. clearing up any misconceptions or any other, you know, uh, diversionary uh, statements that could come out subsequent to this. For those who said, you know, ancestral feud may just be returning, the Oba has cleared that again. There's mm. no controversy. Yes. It's for peace. And he says, this is not my statement. I think that was very crucial. Okay. He says, this is not my statement. This is the statement of the Benin people. Mm. The people have spoken. The youths have spoken. It is our artifacts. We want them back where they were taken from. And we know who is the custodian of those artifacts, the custodian of tradition and culture, the Oba himself, the Oba of Benin. Yes, and I imagine uh, legal 
practitioners listening to this statement would concur. You know, you, you steal something, you return it to the person you stole it from. Uh, so it would seem that there is a degree of presumption around going and setting up a trust without involving or getting the blessing of the Oba in the first place. And uh, we wait to hear what more can be said beyond what has been said today. Oh, well, wait for next week. <laughs> we should hear more about this in the, in the new week. The story definitely continues. And again, and he stated he doesn't talk to the media. Doesn't talk to the media. The departure and, from and, Yeah, movie. and uh, really glad that, you know, Arise News got the exclusive there and got to hear from him. So, oh yeah, do stay tuned. This is a very, very interesting developing story here. Mm -hmm. Well, let's not forget that he also thanked the governor uh, for joining the struggle to retrieve the stolen artifacts. Uh, that was also important to note. He mm -hmm. says, you know, we thank you. However, there's this private entity we're hearing about. We do not know what this is, but let us tell you that we are not going to associate with this. We don't know it. It doesn't exist because the artifacts should return to where they belong. I mean, very in keeping with his, uh, his alias, if you like, the, the Oba of Peace, to establish that they started off on the right footing. They started off from a point of agreement, after which there seemed to have been a departure. And it's almost a, it's a message to uh, outside entities, to those who are dealing with the governor, to say, you have no legal basis to deal with him because he doesn't have ownership of the artifacts. And there are a lot of reasons why the, uh, I mean, the Benin, kingdom is so rich in history and culture, it's so revered. Why the Oba remains one of the most revered monarchs you can find. Um, it's because of things like this, that traditionally heritage, culture matters. You know, no matter how we evolutionize, no matter how the world becomes global, there are some things you should never lose sight of. There's some things, some things you should never lose. And that's tradition, that's culture, that's history. And this is what these artifacts represent. Like I said, they are fragments of history, fragments of culture that were forcibly taken, were forcefully taken. And now if they are to be returned, it only makes sense, common sense perhaps, that they should return to where they were taken. Where they were taken from. And I, I, I don't think, you know, judging from the outlook of the Oba, uh, he's, he seems to be very broad-minded, that he appreciates that this is a teachable moment mm -hmm. in time, and mm -hmm. he, he's making use of this opportunity. Hence, he, the reason he opened up his palace to the press, to instruct people who may not be conversant with uh, the connection the Oba has with the, uh, with the culture, as being a custodian of culture, to instruct those watching that this is this is the significance of these artifacts, and this is why it needs to proceed in this manner. Mm -hmm.
Aguatua, Awakarele, Awa, 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 Kagele, a gato aya. Oba, a we na gwa na we. Is there na na kavu ne muwa de gwa? I can no marry pegbe. Ana tamu a we. A u sui mama noroto. Na kabo we ya u wa se. Na kabo we ya kiu nuwa. Oba u na we na na go nuwa we gwa. A we na wa le wa na gwa na we. E mama ni afe fe yoroto. Well, at some point uh, in the conversation we've been listening to today, uh, that statement, the Oba Benin statement read out by the Iase of Benin, the Prime Minister, the traditional Prime Minister, he did mention that the, the federal government, uh, you know, the only condition perhaps would be uh, if the federal government with a hat now comes in with a view to transpelling to original owners uh, because it says there are external treaties and laws guiding the process. And so uh, that's the only time we have the federal government mentioned in all of this. Otherwise, he says it's not the property of the state government, it's not the property of any private entity, uh, not formed by the Benin Kingdom. Indeed, and that struck me as well that he at least he left the door open with that statement for a mediator to step in between the two, uh, rather than seeming to close the door on any alternative. So he's saying that in the absence of the artifacts being returned directly to him, the only other person who could intervene and mediate on behalf of this matter would be the federal government. Mm. Yeah, and the Oba's chiefs, they are now praising the, uh, the, the Oba for his, his wisdom, his, his leadership. Uh, and yes, of course, he's still having some more words with his subjects. But yes, the subjects praising, singing, celebrating their king, praising him for his wisdom and his leadership. Because I have to, it has to be said, he has uh, been a model of leadership in this particular matter. Very straight to the point. Just bring back the artifacts. We had an agreement, straightforward, and uh, and let's move on. So. All, all in order so far today. I have to say, Rutus, I'm more inspired, uh, if you like, by the possibility of trying to bring about a, a restoration of our, our former cultures. You know, the fact that I feel so much has been lost by assuming that the two have no meeting point. Mm. But listening to the urban, listening to, he, he is a communicator. He's managed to bring about arguments that would persuade even people who had no knowledge of what we're dealing with here to say, look, this is where this started and this is where it should be heading. Um, I would love to pick his brains on what he sees as the future mm. of you know, our culture in the light of these artifacts being returned, what he sees as what can be handed over to the next generation to give them a way forward. The Oba doesn't join issues publicly. To tell you how significant this is to him and how important it is for the Benin Kingdom and as the uh, custodian of the culture and tradition of the Benin, uh, Benin people. This is important to him. Uh, quick facts. So he's the Omo Noba Nedo Ukwa Polo Polo. I know you can even wonder what is Ukwa Polo Polo. It's a very solid name. <laughs> yeah, very solid. It, it translates you know, loosely to the big embodiment. Okay. He's seen as the elephant that cannot be lifted. Okay. Uh, the Benin people see their king, the Oba of Benin, as the mirror which which they see themselves. So when the Oba speaks, he truly speaks for his people. I mean, that's role modeling, if ever you saw it. And, and, and to, sometimes the way we easily dismiss our, our past, this is the very thing that other nations seek after. Even after they have established governments, they still hold on to their monarchies because you're looking for a role model, someone who will embody that perfection that you, know, you want to look up to in spite of the fact that you know that people make mistakes. But here is somebody that will remind you of what you cannot you know, aspire towards. Yes, sir. 
A rare Lisa. moment everyone can enjoy. Lisa. Is uh, a nigger. Is a is a yes, I would do. Is a about okay. Look, you must wear the two papa. See, yes, I would do it, you know, with the two papa. He said, If you're back, I don't know about me, and I'm so big. I've got to work. So the chiefs are paying homage uh, and more of the, his people are still, his subjects are still paying homage and they're chanting Obatom uh, Paye, which means long, long live the king. Oh, please educate me. Obaite. <laughs> and Isha means amen. Yes. Obatom Paye. May the king live long. Amen. Amen. Bottom pay.
You've been watching a special coverage here on the Raj News uh, straight directly from the palace of the Oba of Benin, Oba Iwari II, uh, who's been speaking on the uh, looted artifacts to be returned to the country. Uh, summary, there's no controversy between the palace and the governor or the state government. Uh, he says that the artifacts should be returned to the palace where they do belong. Indeed, Adesua, uh, it's been a very enlightening coverage uh, from here, including uh, an Arise exclusive with the Oba himself.